What is going on ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to another video. Today we continue our SCP journey with SCP-354, The Red Pool. Obviously this video is from Exploring Series. I think he's now probably my favourite SCP channel. So for all those people asking me who my favourite SCP channel is, I think I'm going to go with Exploring Series for now. But yeah, I did put out a poll on the YouTube channel last night. Which SCP would you guys like to see next? I gave you the four options. You guys voted and here we are fulfilling the poll so yeah you guys voted for the red pool no idea what it is literally no idea what it is the thumbnail kind of looks like a thumbnail looks like red liquid like a red swimming pool almost but i have no idea what it is judging by the title i would assume it's like a just a pool of red liquid looks a bit like a jelly swimming in the swimming pool i guess or jello we call it jelly in the UK, you know what I mean? So if you are new to my channel, be sure to hit that subscribe button. We upload twice a day, 3 p.m. and 6 p.m. UK time. And you can join our Discord for all the latest updates. You can interact with me, all that good stuff. But yeah, all the links to that down below. If you have any suggestions, leave them down there as well in the comment section. I'll be sure to look into them. But yeah, we're going to get into this video. Without further ado, let's go. SCP-354 the red pool there are many aspects of scps that can make them interesting you know what gets me every time about exploring series video he speaks very quietly so i have to always adjust the volume so you guys can hear it properly this this does not look very appetizing first impression is not great snowy snowy background looks like a pool of blood but yeah always fun from unique concepts of horror and science fiction to gripping emotional writing grotesque situations or utterly alien dimension. SCP-354 is definitely an interesting one, although mostly because of two almost completely separate reasons. On the surface, it's another SCP filled with horrific monsters. Oh. But it's not without its layers of complexity. And by the end, we'll be left with plenty of question. SCP-354 is, as the title so eloquently suggests, a pool of red liquid in northern Canada. Although Canada. it is also sometimes referred to as the blood pond, oh. due to the consistency and color of the liquid. And the smell of iron as well. I'm actually coincidentally wearing a red shirt today. Didn't plan that one out, ladies and gentlemen. Didn't plan it out. Happy coincidence. He did say something about it leaves more questions or something at the end. Every SCP we've reacted to, you could, you could ask a hundred million fucking questions because every SCP is so open-ended, you know? The chemical composition of the liquid is still unknown, Oof. although the Foundation can confirm that it is not biological in nature. Oh. It seems to become more dense the further you go down. Oh no. And the Foundation has yet to discover a bottom. Jesus. The pool was supposedly first discovered by survivors of a plane crash, and it developed into a local legend before the Foundation stepped in. Mm. Originally, the Foundation simply monitored the pool and deterred anyone from finding it. But after discovering the real danger of the pool, a site was built around it. Fair play. Periodically, one or more entities will emerge from the Red Pool. Hey? Varying in size, shape, and capabilities, with nearly all of them being extremely hostile and dangerous. Jesus. So, let's get this right. This Red Pool in Canada... Discovered by plane crash victor or plane crash survivors. They found it. Obviously, it just probably looked like a river of blood or a lake of blood or a little pond of blood. But this liquid, it, it the further you go into it, the more dense it gets, right? So the thicker, the closer the particles are together, right? And occasionally, weird creatures come out of it. And they're always hostile. Or hostile so they're always trying to kill you that's what that means yeah how much worse can this get the first creature encountered by the foundation resembled a giant bat that mm. managed to wipe out the team observing the pool before being eliminated wow after this a proper site was built around the pool with an enclosure to stop any further entities from attacking the personnel good job the next entity was a bear-sized creature resembling Ooh. an echidna covered in bulletproof spines although it couldn't get through the enclosure and was eliminated with napalm. Napalm. Next, a metallic sphere emerged from the pool that was capable of levitation and emitted concentrated beams of radiation. 
What? A doctor managed to strike it with a sledgehammer, causing it to explode. Sledgehammer. A few humanoid entities have also been seen, including a reptilian-looking creature roughly 15 feet tall, mm. 15 and a feet. metallic entity described as a Terminator, as who a was highly adept at combat and possessed some sort of cloaking device. Was he like Arnold Schwarzenegger? Jesus Christ. What one got me there? The one with the spines, dude. Like, oh, the sledgehammer. A doctor come behind it and hit it with a sledgehammer. So what, what, this liquid, I need to know what it is. Like, these entities, I thought if it's made of liquid, a sledgehammer might just go straight through it. Maybe not. The reptilian entity was killed by Mobile Task Force Omega-7. Yes. While the metallic one powered down after 60 minutes and was dismantled. Quick question, what is your favorite MTF force? Obviously, as you guys know, I didn't react to it, or I did react to it, the video got corrupted, man. I think mine is Nine-Tailed Fox, just because of the Naruto similarities. Well, you guys let me know, what is your favorite? Comments below. Another humanoid entity that emerged seemed to be a human male of Indian descent that was killed on site due to the enclosure still being damaged from a previous encounter. Mm. Testing on the remains seemed to show the entity being identical to an average human being. Oh! Other creatures encountered include feline entities made up of some sort of crystal, and something possessing large tentacles that retreated back into the pool after sustained gunfire. So the things that come out aren't made of the liquid. So, the Foundation really had no way of preventing the pool from creating these entities, and thus they focused on trying to study any of these creatures a task made difficult due to their hostile nature. Mm. We're not really given any information about how often these emergences occur, although in one case there was a period of 8 months between encounters. We then learn that there has been a period of 22 months since the last emergence, with the doctor in charge believing that either the pool is dying or dead, or that it is charging up for something big. The O5 Council believed it was the former, cutting the site's budget. Of course. Of course the O5 Council decided to do that. It wouldn't be very entertaining, would it, if they decided not to? It wouldn't have been as nearly as interesting, would it? What the hell is going to happen now? O5 Council, but boys, boys, you can't be doing that. The pool is dead. The pool is dead. Jesus, guy has been releasing, releasing hostile entities, and all of a sudden it's dead because it's been dormant for 22 months or two years. The bloody old man... 106 can be dormant for fucking it forever and then one one day he decides to eat you you know what i mean you didn't let him out another thing i was picking up on i thought the entities that came out were like made of the red sludge or the red liquid no they're just regular entities like a re regular human or bear or whatever sometime later the staff of the 354 site evacuated the facility shutting down power to the area and taking a number of supplies and vehicles with them Fair An MTF was sent to investigate, but the site's nuclear warhead was detonated before they could arrive. Instead, they caught up with the fleeing staff, which turned out to be both D-Class and research personnel, oh, the as D -class. the chain of command had fallen apart. It's not very often D-Class They were flee, armed, is it? and immediately began firing upon the MTF, Whoa. killing the team. No further contact has been made with them since. The Red Bull, it Through the detonation them. of the warhead, a new containment facility was built around the pool, this time focused entirely on containing the threats rather than any study. This is because the new head of the site believes that the pool is capable of some sort of mental influence which mm. caused the previous incident. Finally, we're given an interview log with an agent that works at the 354 containment facility. It seems that a doctor had the idea to try draining the pool, which seemed to everyone to be a good idea. Why? Although he wonders why no one thought of it before. Mm, I wonder why. He claims that although the SCP entry makes it seem as if the Foundation has 354 under control, that's hardly the case, as every time another entity emerges from the pool, it manages to get loose in the building. The O5 Council approved the plan to drain the pool, and a massive pump was brought in. The agent claims that when they put the hose into the pool, everything stopped being real, like they were in a dream but needed to wake up in order to escape it. Everyone on site felt this sensation, and he claims that the pool wouldn't allow them to activate the pump, and now that they've tried to execute it, it's angry. Oh no. The agent breaks into hysterics, saying that the pool is growing every day, 
and now they've made it angry. That might be enough for a good SCP, a deeply mysterious pool that spits out hostile entities for sure. and seems to have a mind of its own. For sure, that's But mysterious. many would say it's the exploration log that really makes 354 what it is. As we'll see, the exploration log is really almost its own separate SCP, mm. as both could be enjoyed independently of one another. But it does raise some even more interesting questions about 354. Since the pool gets denser as you descend, the Foundation sends a team in a vehicle described as a submarine with a drill attached to the front Big mistake. in order to explore the pool, whether to find the bottom, something inside of the pool itself, or to find another side. The crew consists of a doctor, three agents, two D-class personnel, mm -hmm. a geologist, and a, a pilot. Geologist. The vessel descends through the incredibly dense liquid for two days before wow. gravity suddenly changed directions, and they were now ascending rather than descending. Crazy behavior. On the fourth day of the mission, the vessel reached the surface of the pool, although they were definitely now in a different location than where they left. Oh. The ship analyzes the atmosphere, finding that the air is breathable, but it was nighttime when they arrived and continues to be dark for over 28 hours. Finally, dawn comes thanks to a huge red star in the sky, clearly not Earth's sun. The doctor ponders whether they are in a different time, place, dimension, or plane of existence. I'm gonna go with they're in a different dimension. They're in the upside down. That's that's what they're in. And you know, if we've we've learned anything from Stranger Things, the upside down is not a place you wanna be. This red pool leads to another universe, dimension, whatever. If you go down, it would make sense, it would make sense. So that that's interesting, that's very interesting. Like he said, you could take it or leave, what do you say, it could be a whole different SCP, which may... So maybe these creatures that come out come from this other place, right? Because they go all the way down in the pool. They find that the red pool on this side is larger than the one contained by the Foundation. Mm. But the crew took an inflatable raft to the shore, finding the ground to be devoid of plant life, aside from a fuzzy moss. It's the upside down. The ground seems to be made up of some type of mineral resembling a mixture of sand and flour. They begin hiking across the flat terrain in one direction for two hours. Why? Until suddenly their compass changes direction. Mm -mm. Rather than risking getting lost, they yep. return to the ship. Smart move. Although the doctor swears that it took less than half the amount of time to get back. Uh. The sun never goes down as they try to sleep. And they believe the day-night cycle here is around 43 and a half hours compared to 24. They wait out the next night cycle and head out a few hours before the sun comes up, finding the green moss on the shore has grown drastically. Deciding not to walk on it, they good, waited good until choice. the sun came up, causing the moss to shrivel again. Okay. It's at this point that the doctor realizes that there's no wind whatsoever here, mm. meaning there's practically no sound. They hike in a single direction for a while before setting up camp and sleeping, despite the sun still being up. While they're sleeping, they're all awoken by some kind of roar from something big and reptilian. Mm -hmm. And it sounded like it couldn't have been further than 20 feet away. Jesus. After emerging from their tents, they saw nothing. And the flat terrain for miles would certainly allow them to see a creature moving. They continued on, eventually leaving the mossy ground behind and finding a vast field of beautiful green grass resembling a mowed lawn. Mm. The grass turned out to have Get extremely sharp points, as they discovered when someone tripped and fell. Idiot. But their boots allowed them to easily walk through it. They eventually found a small stream, and after testing the water, found it to be actually liquid carbon dioxide, despite CO2 normally being a gas at this temperature. Alright, so the laws of physics, physics do not apply in this universe, as is in most parallel universes in this SCP universe. So. Let's get it straight, there's porcupine grass. Fair play, dude. I wonder, I wonder what happened to the guy who fell in it. Next, they moved on to an area where the green grass turned brown. And also, where's the food and, and water? there were trees resembling birch, although the leaves were wrong. At some point, they lost one of the agents while they were walking, mm. although no one knows when or how he disappeared. Since he just, the place is so quiet, and they don't talk much. The doctor says there was an eight hour window where he could have gone missing. Wow. But it's certainly strange that no one heard anything. That's very true. While camping, one of the trees fell onto another agent's tent, 
mangling it, but leaving him unharmed. Oh. The agent swears that the tree wasn't that close, and no one knows how it could have fallen. But yeah, they agree to not to camp near any trees. It's time to go home. They hear another roar while walking, identical to the last one. Mm. Although they can't figure out the source, or even agree on what direction it came from. I think it's time to go home at this point. Honestly, like, one guy's just disappeared. You, you have an eight-hour window where he could have gone missing. You don't know what happened to him. He's just gone. You never, you don't even know when he went missing, Jesus. And then you have this guy who a tree just fell on his tent. I mean, luckily he's not dead. It seems like the agents, who I'm assuming are the guys who actually can use the weapons, they're going to, they're dying off slowly. You don't want to be left with just researchers, the pilot. Well, the pilot's the most important one. He needs to take you back. So you make sure he lives at all costs. But yeah, this, this does not sound fun. I can already see where this is going. I'd assume one person makes it back to tell the story, but yeah. Finally, they experienced their first rainfall, mm. setting up their camp. It's not rain, And though, analyzing the rain to find that it's actually water. Oh. So they fill their canteens. The rain continues for three days, and when it finally subsides, they find the ground to be barely damp at all. They continue on, but some data corruption removes the next few days of logs, with the next entry being a little over two weeks since they had oh. left the ship. They had apparently sighted a large cliff in the distance, oh, but now, upon me. approaching it, realize that it's actually an artificially constructed wall. It's the Hunger Games. Roughly 50 feet high and made of solid, rusty iron. Rusty. It extends as far as they can see in both directions. Jesus. And they're unsure of how thick it is. One of the D-Class constructs a jury-rigged blowtorch, and they burn through the wall, discovering it's only about a quarter of an inch thick. But, less than a foot past the wall, there's another layer. Mm. They end up burning through eight layers before making it to the other side, Finding an area with black grass, and nope. finally, some wind. Ah. At this point, massive data corruption causes the log to lose nearly two weeks of material. Mm. And when it comes back, the doctor remarks that they've concluded that coming here was a mistake. Correct. And they have to turn back. I mean, I, I could have told you that. Apparently, they had passed through another barrier and gone much farther. But we have practically no details about what they found. The doctor remarks that the geologist has lost a lot of blood. Ooh. And he probably won't make it through the night. Mr. Rock Analyzer. They awoke to find that the geologist has crossed. Whatever that means. What does that and mean? And they had no choice but to terminate him. Oh. One of the agents says that something back home might be able to help him. But they can't afford to have him slow them down. Fair enough. The doctor mentions that they only have a few more days until something happens, mm. but more data corruption cuts him off, and we jump forward another eight days. He says that they made it back to the ship with only an hour or two to spare, and we learn that only the doctor, the two D-Class, and the pilot have survived, ah. although the pilot and one of the D-Class hadn't gone on that hike. Oh. The four activate the vessel and begin to- So they left the pilot and a D-Class at home. Good thinking. Very good. This is not something you usually see with the people in the SCP universe. You, you don't see this. Honestly, the amount of times I've been bamboozled at the idiocy of some of the guys here, man. Honestly, like the woman in the 106 video where she just, if you believe it or not, where, you know, she sees a kidney, you know, the power goes out, all that, and she doesn't run. You know what I mean? This smart, leave a guy with the ship. I mean, a D-Class ain't going to protect you, but you know, he's a meat shield, so, you know, at least he can get the ship home safely. So, yeah, smart, so they, they, they kept the pilot safe. Obviously, all the agents died, and, what, one of the geologists, and I don't know if any researchers did. But... Descending back through the pool, but more data corruption occurs, ending the log. Finally, we learn that this document was discovered in the Foundation's database, and that a mission to explore 354 has never been suggested or approved and no records of any of the personnel mentioned seem to exist. Oh, shit. The exploration log is a bit more divisive than the 354 entry itself, mm. since it sets up a really unique and interesting world, yes. and then leaves so much hanging on its climax. That's very sure. Depending on your perspective, this either serves to make the log even more interesting or more frustrating. Frustrating. What it certainly does do is raise a lot of questions. 
both For about sure. this other world and the red pool itself. Where is this other world, mm. and why does it connect to ours only through a red pool? You can also have a lot of Why things. is there no wind? What was mm. that roaring sound? What why did the, the streams consist of CO2 and yet it rains water? And what built the wall? Mm, what did of course, the, the biggest wall? questions are what happened to the team on the other Correct. side of the wall. What did the doctor mean when he said the geologist crossed? crossed and why bro. were they running out of time? So, I know. Finally, where exactly did this log come from? And is it possible that the red pool connects to different dimensions? Yes, or sure. even somehow managed to fabricate the log to prevent further explorations? Probably. Like I said, you can enjoy the Red Pool without ever reading the exploration mm, log. Ow. And you can enjoy the log of a weird alien dimension very true. without being interested in the Red Pool and its monsters. Together, they are one of the more popular SCP entries. Mm. And much of that popularity is certainly due to the exploration log. Well, it does utilize some heavy-handed tropes. Both the pool and the mysterious dimension are evocative enough to represent some of the most interesting aspects of early SCPs. Ooh, the quote. Oh, I'm not reading redacted, dude. You guys can read uh, all the redacted. Okay, that's the end of the red pool. Not what I was expecting, for sure. I mean, I was expecting a, a pool of water that is obviously anomalous and probably kills people. Not exactly what I was expecting. Obviously, the video is kind of in two parts. You have the red pool description, which is, you know, the whole part of them containing it, what comes out. Obviously, if you believe in the story, you could say the creatures do come from that other universe. Obviously, it's kind of weird how it gets denser. The laws of physics don't really apply in that second universe. Plus, there's no records of it ever happening, all of that. So, yeah, like every SCP, you could have a 100 million questions to ask at the end of a video. But, yeah, man, definitely very interesting. Definitely one of the more... I mean, not the, it's definitely creepy slash scary, but it's not... It's not scarring and disturbing like a few of the others we've done recently man but yeah you guys let me know what you think on the red pool man thank you all for watching this video be sure to subscribe and i'll see you all next time